Weird Science is the Revolution. Detective Comics number 1082, written by Ram V, with art by Ricardo Frederici and Stefano Raffaele. So there are two artists. We'll get the second artist. Uh, Stefano does the uh, question stuff. Colors by Lee Lowridge and letters by Ariana Mayer. And yeah, we're of the mind. So right away, you got to watch yourself. You can't go too heavy in the mind because it doesn't mean anything. I mean, it well, doesn't even the matter. Idea really of, doesn't you know, having matter. you know Batman of the mind dealing with the asthma and the uh, hyper adapter of the mind kind of stuff that's like fighting duality of it. While you have Doctor Hurt being the narrator of what's going on to Batman, like the idea was Batman the best use of your time, or could Bruce Wayne have done more for the city by using his money to stop things? Because as you have a city of the mind overrun with just random clowns as an uh, analog to the Joker and just any of uh, DC comics like Gotham Rogues Gallery. What fun is it for a clown in a place that's happy? So you wouldn't have these things if you actually did your job as Bruce Wayne and used your money for good. And you have a lot of this until Bruce just starts fighting, you know, the asthma of the mind, the freaking demon wolfman who wants to take him over. But the idea of Dr. Hurt being the never, I know he's, he is so heavily tied to the hyper adapter idea of the Barbatos that he's just here, but I don't understand why he's here. Like, why is he Why is he just the avatar of Barbatos at this point to tell us what we need to know? And you've said it already, only because the connection, the, the hyperdeptor. But in this where Ram V, and really, I mean, basic, basic bitch, really. The idea, hey, guess what Ram V said? That Bruce Wayne would have been better used his money to help Gotham than to you do say? as Crusade. I mean, we, we've seen this a million times, but he's trying to get it a little more fancy here. But when you end up having Dr. Hurt, the thing is, you want to kind of maybe he in his head and maybe some people have figured out what but i'm with you through the whole time all i kept thinking of why dr hurt what what does this mean does this mean something different is he trying to show us a different level of this a layer this, and no and again i'm like am there. i just am i just dealing with the mystical aspect of dr hurt as well who somehow has transported himself to the mind because of the connection to barbados and whatnot or is it just nothing in general? Because even in the backup of the story, we just have Dr. Hurt doing sadistic, spiritual Dr. Hurt, I say spiritual, but like sorceress, like sorcery kind of stuff that Dr. Hurt does where people are trying to get back at him. And it's just this weird backup Dr. Hurt story. I'm like, does this tie in at all? Or is it just to like, you know, just to fill up page space to make it an extra buck? It's, it's an odd thing because it's a backup too. the, what I saw was I was, you know, looking at different things, reviews and talking to some people with other stuff as well, but they ended up where, our first review of this, you know, arc with the backup with Dr. Hurt, people are even like they, they're not really in the know. They need to be guided a bit because some people think, well, Dr. Hurt, Dr. Hate, we have all these things that are swirling around in their heads. It's one of those things like I'm not a big Grant Morrison fan. No, but things but that's just a big like thing. Dr. Hurt, where we throw this character in there, these weird ideas and concepts that can never be fully fledged out because the idea that you can never fully understand this is pretty much how far you take the character. Like, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this. Or is it all of those? Is it none of those things? Really ambiguous. And every time Dr. Hurt shows up, it's always this weird moment where I'm like, what are you going to do this time, guy? Because I never understood your character for where it goes. Oh, you're a spiritual, like, immortal guy because of the hyper adapt of this. You're all these different concepts that Grant Morrison has thrown out there, but you're none of them as well, but it doesn't matter. Because I think even the last time we saw him, I think it was during Nightwing's Rebirth, it was like, oh, I got, you know, Professor Pig to make some Dolatrons of, you know, Dick Grayson and Rob. And I forgot like about that, when we saw him there. I think we I'm saw him like, one time in uh, Scott Snyder's run as well. But that was we, like uh, a maze of the mind. I mean, every time he shows up, you get wacky. And I hate just, that. yeah, that's so do I. And uh, again, I think that there are things, and I, I'm trying to think of uh, another example, but seriously, Dr. Hurt is one of those things that you're never going to have him just show up, like just walk into a room and, hey guys, what's going on? It's me. That, it always is wacky like this. And the other thing, while not really a Ram V fault, maybe an overall DC fault and also editors, is you're dealing with this part of the. But we're also then on the opposite side with Chip Zdarsky and Batman. We have the Zero and R stuff, and things do start getting like, okay, we kind of have to But as we've been told in different things where this takes place after Chip Zdarsky stuff or whatever that means to anybody but out the there. the problem is we're reading it at the same time. You can, you can tell me. I'm even going to go with something quite like that when we get to Green Arrow of the idea of what we know, but what we know is more than what's really going on. Because, again, here we are, and we're reading both at the same time, and we get into this, and – Maybe some people are picking and choosing things, but I kind of don't. I, I hate where people seem to elevate an issue when they end it confused. Like the idea yeah. of like, and we've talked about this many a time of maybe people don't want to admit they're stupid. I don't mind saying I'm stupid. I know I am. And I know I'm a dummy a lot of times. But that's why well, I like coming on. Out. 
And then also, I like coming on the podcast because a lot of times you will correct me or vice versa <laughs> occasionally. But still, that's why I love talking about comics. I don't mind if I'm wrong. If I'm really stupid, edit it out. But if, if, if it's just the <laughs> idea. Like if I ended up saying, well, I think this is this and this, and I end up being wrong, that's fine. Again, free and arrow, we'll, we'll do a little of that. But when I end an issue and I really think, okay, as a joke, we say, I, I don't think that I'm that dumb. I may not be the smartest guy. But when I get done an issue and I don't even know what I read, there is a problem. And how many people are going to keep wanting that to happen? You actually are buying something that is telling you, I don't want to tell you this story in a way you'll understand. And I don't get it. And that's Ramsey does it a lot. Does he pay off at the end? I don't think so. I mean, there's the <laughs> swamp thing at the end. Like, yeah, it kept going and going. People loved it for the moments. The, like I said, the mood, the deal. But at the end, it, it kind of fell apart, and in this, well, I just the big story that people seem to love was the idea of the hate bomb the Nazis left behind during the Blitz and stuff like that, which was outside the normal story that he was trying to tell. It was like a one-off issue number five, I think it was, out of an eight-issue mini. It's like, I don't like, you're telling the story that all of a sudden, all right, put a pin in that, we're going to tell this one-off that people love because it was just the idea of it, but it meant nothing to the series overall for what you're trying to understand about the new character, Levi Kamei. Yeah. And and again, something that you desperately need to get info. So when you have this, you know, Orgum, all this stuff going on in this book, the asthma, you end up having names. I think that finally an editor said to Randy, listen, you've been doing this story for almost two years. People don't know the names of the characters. So he ends up saying at that one point, you know, Erhard, the eyes lady. Where you have to, I think you have to do that. That That's exactly what I needed at that point in time. When, when they're like, oh, the eyes lady. Yeah, I know that dumb bitch. Yeah, you knew her because the eyes lady. But the eyes yeah. lady has been in this book for almost woman. two years. Two years. And we still don't know. So when you get this, I love that the title and a lot of the issue deals with sand. He has one line that is actually pretty clever the way that he plays it out. But really, in my mind, foundation of sand. Because I can still sit there and say, as a joke, what, what was the organ place? But the big play is, what, what's the thalamus engine? What's the reality engine? What does it really do? How is it doing it? And also, how is it, I say this to you all the time, I said it before we started, how is a foreign, you know, royalty, a family coming into Gotham? Yeah, they have the reality engine. That's fine. But yep, just because they have a deed <laughs> of land for the Arkham Asylum, suddenly they're allowed to, to, and they're not doing it from the shadows. They are on no. Front Street, right? Front Street, and this is but probably... Grease and some palms. Yeah, Clinical. but again, that doesn't allow... Just imagine that some, and it seems like they might be from India, never really was spelled out fully, but an Indian family comes to, you know, New York City. The minute they get there, they're going to yell that they're going to execute somebody, and then they're just running shit up on front. Somebody not in the city might have a problem with this. Might say, "What's going on in Gotham?" Uh, that's New York's problem. Yeah, it, that you have to, you do have to, you know, have some suspension of disbelief. But Agreed. sometimes it gets too far. It gets too far, and we can say, for the most part, anybody that's going to be active in this whole situation, they're going to be as murdered up and be taken control of. For the most part, we we don't know how far that's gone throughout the city as well. But like, I, I, for the majority, I feel like. Oh, they're going to hang someone. There's an angry mob. Well, I ain't going down there. Yeah, I remember it was shit. weird. Then then some people fought against it. I was, like, things get wonky. And even in this, I think that what he is doing, again, he's taking way too long. And it's still taking way too long. Is, you know, maybe you can get rid of the man, but you can't get rid of the symbol. Maybe you can get rid of the symbol, but you can't. I, whatever it is, it's the idea. Because even in this, when that one, you know, paramilitary policeman looks and sees the Batarang. He has that, like, look of, oh, my God, I remember Bat, like, oh, my God, I'm starting to remember Batman. Like a distant nightmare I remembered as a child. What is this thing? This is a an child. actual dialogue. This is me thinking. The actual dialogue, why is, like, you almost have this, again, we talk about it, sixth grade dark poetry, but it almost feels like with the AI stuff going around, I love it if you don't know her. I do. You get, you write a, a script, and the script is, Batman uh, should have used the money to help Gotham. And, and once he leaves, we're going to make everybody forget the end. Puts it through the AI pretentious as shit filter and out pops things you got like. That? You got that filter? That's a filter. Laughing down a pavement of unblemished human truths. Why are we doing this? I, we talked about this. I'm just sitting in the, the background. When, when you're talking about the idea, what's the Oregon place? Why would they allow this to go on outside of Gotham with the knowledge of what is happening inside Gotham? But I'm like, 
Why did it take the Orgums over 400 years to come back and fix a mistake in the 1600s? Eric, they are they they are very deliberate in their actions. And you go, no. And and so again, because see, that's the whole idea is that everything that's happening in Gotham right now is because they fucked up the Thalamus engine in the 1600s and early days of Gotham, where a, a man dressed as a bat came around, where you had like a like colonial fucking two face and scarecrows and weird shit like that, and that's what the world has been made around it ever since. And now we got to fix our mistake and make asthmas and organs because that's the shit we like. Yeah, and, and even then, like. When we talk about a lot of other things, I we don't really get the street level like, oh, look at all these asthma gangs or what, like what is happening in the city. Just and now it is. Hey, I don't remember the Batmans. I wonder about the Batmans. And the question, Renee Montoya is on the case, but the stuff with well, no, even Batman, the idea of Renee Montoya because even Renee Montoya being on the case, it ultimately boils down to man that detective Fielding. He done got killed by Detective Nash, and I got to get to the bottom of that. It feels so small compared to what's actually happening in the city while they're still contending with the idea that Batgirl's still out there man how does she still be able to continue the symbol on me being Renee Montoya the question I can hardly remember what this is but it seems so familiar to me but like gotta get down to the like who killed Detective Fielding and why Nash did this and you have you know Cassandra she's in and uh I don't know even that like instead of actually having dialogue at most points it's over narration and that doesn't fit for me or hit for me it doesn't sink in as much with she said this and she looked at me in a glance and do that but then i'm starting to think like where's barbara gordon where is nightwing where is damien like all this stuff going on with batman missing again that's kind of a thing you have to play with these books, but it's and still we're not caught so up to that point yet. We're off doing something else in six months from you now. You say from the point, I just need to know what the hell they're doing. And one of them, Cass is there, which is fine. He's going to play almost like the mute cast play in this with that narration stuff. But even so, well, even the idea because you say we're playing the mute cast because well, she doesn't like, talk it, because of the it narration. Is, it, it is the narration, but even Renee is like, oh, they, she told yeah, me she this. Said, like, right. yeah. And it's it's brief words. You're still playing the mostly yeah. mute cast who like doesn't like just talk like a goddamn chat, chatter mouth. Oh, I yeah, can't think I, of it. <laughs> chatter mouth. Ch- chatter mouth. I like it's a chatter mouth. You know, but like the hell even races. Then when you go, when you have a Dr. Hurt, like you said, and just to point out in that song, Lisa in the rap did say that Batman hasn't done much in this whole run. He still Nothing. isn't. I mean, this is a He mind. did something that one issue where he blew up the Oregon place, and that feels like the yeah. majority of what we had Batman do the entire Ram V run besides would be passed out while other people do stuff. And even when you get action... It's of the mind. He seemingly is crawling through the desert at this point, trying to fight off the asthma and Barbados of the mind. Even then, to, to tie it in what I said about, hey, we're reading both Chip Zdarsky and this, you even start with Dr. Hurt, like, this is a city that you would like, the city with a, it feels so much like when, he, you know, Batman went in the multiverse, that sort of play. And it just, everything feels like Ramsey thinks he's reinventing the wheel, but it just feels so overdone. It feels like, well, uh, you know, the, the tread idea. of that tire. It's already off because we've dealt with these things before. Even with the idea, though, where Dr. Hurt's talking about, you know, the city that could have been and like the idea of what Batman is better off than being Batman or Bruce Wayne. And he is fighting the the asthma and Wolfman at this point with, you know, giant bat wings. And even with the, the bat wings, it feels weird because it almost feels like maybe Barbados is combining with the yeah, asthma. Yeah, with the same combining. Time, that's but, what I thought. Yeah. But it's so weird because you have no idea. But, you know, Dr. Hurt is saying that Barbados is going to need a sacrifice for you to be able to move on. I'm like, are you going to be able to sacrifice the Batman, which you need to have to be the Bruce Wayne, which Dr. Hurt wants you to say to do, but like then you're still left with the Barbados of the mind, or can you actually just sacrifice the Asper and that be the sacrifice? All, all, I'm, all I'm getting down to is that for whatever reason, Barbados needs a sacrifice for us to move on from here. Like, can you sacrifice the Wolfman of the mind? Sacrifice Dr. Hurt. Uh, you, you're in the mind, though. Again, like, I can't really grip everything of, okay, if he does this, this will happen, because then it could just get pulled away because it's of the mind. And then by the end, he does end up being found and then taken to Talia, who I thought would have been near him anyway. She seemed to have ditched him in the desert, maybe as this little walkabout penance or it's whatever. Up to him now. But it is that idea where everything seems like so overblown for such a non entity of a story of, hey, you got to choose. And also that, that Batman should be better. Bruce Wayne could have been better for Gotham. And 
I have to imagine by the end of Bruce, uh, Bruce Wayne, of Ram V's run, maybe even leading out to, I don't know what the plans are for Batman, maybe just get his money back. Because when Dr. Hurt's talking to him in the desert of the mind, they're like, there's no leaving this desert without facing the truth. You must make your sacrifice to Barbados. Bruce Wayne need not ever win, my boy. But surely Batman must. Otherwise, everything you've done was in vain. And I'm just thinking to myself, like, is the idea he gets out of this, realizes how much, like, you know, Batman, like, the idea of Batman is futile with what he's doing with it while he can do more Bruce Wayne stuff. And, and in my mind, getting his money back from Lucius somehow, whatever it is, just becoming, you know, Bruce Wayne that we know and love. Because at one point you have Dr. Hurt and he's like, oh, man, you gave up all your money for your thing. I'm like, no, 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 they got taken from him. They got taken now. What I thought this was, and, and if by the end, it might... It, it feels so much to me like what we we always say that a lot of writers do now. You know, beat down the character, beat him down, then get him back to status quo. What, yeah, you, you know, did it. And then everybody prays. I think that'll be. But what I do think that could be cool, and and I will give Ram V a credit if this is happening. We have talked a lot about how Gotham should be like Batman. Get the hell out of here! You have lost the city over and over and over. And I think that what Which we makes get sense the, for an absolute power coming. Yeah, and what I get at the end, though, even in this just this book, for them probably get it taken away for absolute. Who knows? But the idea where Gotham has to be reminded that they do love Batman, and that this isn't going to be like what's going on with the Orgums. It's not good, and they suddenly start remembering Batman because of how great he was, and then they welcome him back, and then everybody's happy. And then also in the meantime, he realizes he's got to do better, but. Do you want the stories of Batman, uh, just Bruce Wayne at, you know, meetings saying, I think we have to do this, that, and the other thing? I just think that this ends up being a re, you know, affirmation. Gotham needs Batman. Gotham loves Batman. You can't have Gotham without one or the other. Here we go. We love you. High five. Let's go. But you're taking the long route to that. But one of the things we've been seeing, like Chip Zdarsky's run and different things in Batman, is that the idea that we're getting less Bruce Wade and more Batman, even getting rid of the money and stuff like that, is because he's focused more on being Batman. Actually, like uh, Joshua Williamson's Batman and Robin is trying to get away from that a little bit with the father son aspect of Damian Wade and Harry doing that. Soccer kind of dad. Yeah. Yeah, soccer dad, Bruce Wayne. But for the most part, I think you do need the duality of you need both of them doing as much as you can for like the entire city, and you just can't have one or the other. Well, like I said, I think that maybe. Where I get this is what you said earlier, where the Orgums wait all that time and then they come back. Finally, they come back to Gotham because we can't like we thought we could get rid of the Batman, the Stalamus reality engine. We tried to get rid of them and that, and it didn't work. So we're going to do it again. And I think it's just that whole concept. There can't be a Gotham without a Batman. There can't be a Batman without a Gotham. But I do think that this is like if you end up saying that maybe Dr. Like it's weird because it's the asthma. It's Barbados, Dr. Hurt. But if it is his subconscious making this Dr. Hurt to kind of punish him and him saying, like, this is almost self-punishment of you could have done so much more with your money. Maybe that's a way that he says, yeah, I got to get back my money and I got to do something good with it instead of this nonsense, which would be good. But usually what happens with that sort of thing, just like him losing the money. It means something for about three issues. And then it kind of gets pushed aside where whatever you now what you need whatnot. Before it's all over for Chip Zdarsky and Ram V for their time on the Dark Knight is to take both the Grant Morrison concepts of Zero NR and freaking Barbados Combine. and shove them together and say who, the war for who takes over the mind of the Batman because you have these elements of the mind right now and you just ha- they're just playing off each other like you said earlier like you get confused of what book you're reading a different Bible because they're so closely connected with the Grant Morrison of it all. Yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the big problem with it that. You don't really have a reprieve, it seems, from either or. And this is something, and it's weird because two separate writers, we said this where we didn't understand when Bendis had Superman in action comics. You need to have one or the other that you go for. I guess people would pick with this, but you got a lot of Grant Morrison picking going on. But yeah, the the art, the Federico, uh, whatever, Ricardo Federici's art, it's really good. I mean, when I, even I'm sitting there, I'm like, holy crap, it looks great. But we're not doing much around it. You just have these scenes and, and this, you know, very flowery, a lot of verbiage and things like well, that. Even, and I kinda even wanna... outside of the mind aspect, when we get to the real world where Talia is still waiting to find out what is the fate of the Batman. It's like she has a bunch of troops. Like, we found this guy in, uh, like out there in the sand and he's got this whole bloodied up freaking like wrap around his face. Like you never believe how we found him like this. And you're going to pull off the mask. And you just have some random dude waiting with a goddamn scimitar in the desert watching on him like – all right, what are we doing with this now on top of everything else that we're dealing with? 
And is it that he's, they're going to take the, the rap off and he's going to be a bat? Is he going to be Barbados? Is he a wolf man? I don't know. We'll have to see. But I mean, well, that's the, the thing. Wolf is, man. I don't think this is a Batman. It, it's a weird thing. If, if it is like that might be, I think you're supposed to get almost. And it's weird because that should be like a cliffhanger. But because we have more of the story with Renee Montoya and then a backup, it, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle a bit. But I mean, I thought this was supposed to be, oh, this is going to show if who won. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know what it'll show. It'll be if he's a bat, like just say a bat head. I'm like, I still don't know. Is that Barbados? Is it? <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't know. And then if way, that, okay. and if that happens, I'm just gonna be sitting there like, is this even real? Is this more like we're gonna have the dream where you wake up, but you're actually still in the dream that you were dreaming? Inception. And then oh uh, yeah, yeah, you don't need that. That's what this ends up feeling a lot like, where people will go. Man, I love that movie. And then you're like, well, what was it about? Uh, don't even get me started. <laughs> you don't even know what happened. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I never saw Inception. <laughs> but that's what I hear people say. Uh, I do like the it's art like the change, Freddy actually. Krugers. I like the art change with the Ren- Rene Montoya. I like the uh, Ricardo Frederici art better, but I'm glad that it changes a bit. And again, I think that you're just, you have some detective work. You know, the question, she's, I like yeah, what she said. She's asking she has questions. Some, she has some questions. And at least Renee's there and she's like, oh, okay. with some orgums. The fielding part, the why I, why I think it's kind of neat is that she was wondering that before and it almost as she's chasing this mystery that she's not really even sure why or how. Well, even the idea of it though. When she says that, God, when she's like, Gotham told me this or whatever, I want to think that she means Cass, but then she says Cass. I'm like, nope, the city's talking. This is crazy shit. It's just such a weird idea for me to have the question, like, you know, be a part of this book and how much of a part of the book she is. When the idea is we're trying to get to the bottom of a mystery that you and I, as the reader, have known for a long ass time now, what's actually going on? Yeah, that is a problem. That is a problem is, is the mystery is something that we all know. And that may make it go a little slower like, as well. I think You're that happened like, before on. Night Terrors. Yeah. Yeah, it did. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Eric. You're on to some. Where's my hot take? That is a problem. And so you see, but maybe you're rooting. Come on, question. Ask the Come right on, question. So you got, and we like the fielding part. And again, that I like the idea, like I said, of a mystery that she'd already been thinking of. And then it continues on, but she's not really sure, but it's opening up more things in the symbol. Also, I would say that she was so against Batman and all that, that maybe you could play that too. Like people who just are like, yeah, Batman, by this point, you could almost think that most people in Gotham, when they, the, the bat signal goes up and they're like, oh, well, here it's we a, go. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like half Lock the time, the door, I, honey. It, it, it drives me nuts too, because even going through, I guess it was the uh, Batgirl year one. Gordon in that will light up the bat signal just to chat. There's nothing wrong. Nothing's happening. He just needs to talk to Batman about random things. And I imagine people are freaking out. Oh, no, the Joker's back in town. They run into the house. Now he just wanted to chat. Well, it even goes back to the idea. I think the movies even point out at a certain point. The idea is turn it on to make sure that people understand that like something you should be watching out what you're doing to scare the criminals. Well, and we also love the idea at points where the symbol, you know, the signal went up and it was like, okay, that means we can rest assured Batman's on the case. You know, we've had that part as well. But but in this, you, you have just Renee going around asking questions with the wink, wink. And at the end, you have that to be continued where, who knows? If, and is it that if Batman is revealed here? And you do see that it looks like he's got the cow on still under that, maybe. But when he's revealed, is that scimitar-wielding fellow is he there like, oh, if it's if it's Barbados who comes out, I got to kill him or advice? Well, that's I, the thing. I like, know. I don't even think this guy that was brought to Talia is Batman. I think it's somebody altogether different. Yeah, it would be odd to just <sighs> that thing, maybe because we have so much to go with. But we'll see. We'll see how it is. I, I even the they, idea, I have to imagine that, We're like, just like, who the hell is that? Like, oh, that's how, that's how I imagine it's going to be. But like the idea, too, I think that with Batman doing a walkabout of the mind, trying to get the asthma and the Barbados under control and figure out what he has to do going forward. I think that Renee Montoya is going to get to the bottom of all of this. And like everything else in Rambi series, she's going to be the one to take down the organs. Yeah. But uh, what would you give this overall? Ultimately, I would give this a 5 out of 10. I think the art is fun throughout, but it's just not a fun read. I find it boring for the most part. I'm still just waiting for Batman to do something. Yeah, I'm a 5 as well, but not, the art's too good to get the FU 5. But I agree. When, when I'm reading it, I just it's, it's one of those things that we're this far into the story. I mean, we're going to have over 30 issues of this story, and it's one story. 
And at this point, we're at the stretch run. Why do I feel like I, I'm more confused now than I was 20 issues ago? And I can't sit there in my confused. mind. I can't sit in my mind and think that I, I'm at a point where I don't know what I'm getting towards that would make me like this. Like, I don't even have a light at the end of the tunnel say, oh, I hope this happens. I hope this happens. What I wanted to do is end. It's what I need, and I just, I'm confused. I don't know, and it's not, it's not a fun confusion. It's not a mystery detective. It's just nonsense. Five, five out of ten. <laughs> move on to the next. It just, it's frustrating to even I try to, to even put my own thoughts into a coherent thing after I read it. My mind's a jumble. Weird science is the revolution.